privilege, honestly, to be here with all of you guys and um, an honor. But not only is it a privilege just to be here, but just to be a coach in general. Um, what an awesome um, responsibility that the Lord has blessed all of us with. Um, I just, before I get into the bulk of what I wanted to talk about today, I just wanted to remind us of the importance of the role that we play in our student athletes' lives. Um, many studies are out that show that a coach is one of the top three most influential people in a teenager's life. And so I just wanted to remind us, um, you know, the value that we have and the um, influence that we have over our players. Um, how many of you guys... Um, are or were coaching when you were in your early 20s. I'm 25 years old, so early 20s, let's see, probably most of you in this room. Okay, so I went into my first college um, season this last August. I'm going to my second year now, and my goal was to win. I went, wanted to win. My athletic director was like, you guys need to win, so I'm like, okay, I win. Uh, so I started out 0-9 um, my first season, and I was like, all right, I think the Lord is trying to teach me something in this. It's, humbling, very character building, what is the Lord trying to teach me? And honestly, some of the greatest moments in the last year um, at True Muhammad were seeing the spiritual growth of my players. And, um, you know, our very first game was against Dalton State, very competitive program. Um, we, I know we played Dalton State, I know we lost, it was most likely in three games. Um, and I got into the locker room afterwards and I was like, uh, you know, we played hard, we got a lot to work on. But I can tell you the best thing about today was that earlier in that day, five of my players had rededicated their life to Christ. And that was one thing that I'll remember about my first day or my first game as a head coach at the college level. So that was really special to me. Um, True McConnell does a lot of community service activities, and that is honestly so rewarding to see my players go out into the community. Uh, we participated in the United Way Fun Fest last year where they got the bouncing machines and everything. And my players, uh, several of them did the cotton candy machine for three hours straight. They worked so hard. I think they were sweating. And afterwards, they told me, Coach, we would rather do no ball practices and then do this much cotton candy. I mean, it was just so funny. And they look back on it and they love it. But it was so rewarding to see them really serving the Lord and serving others in that way. And... Um, so um, in the spring, uh, we do where uh, we do our weekly Bible studies all year long. Um, I know a lot of Christian schools or Christian colleges try to incorporate that. Um, and so we um, in the spring we decided to go through a book, and I gave the girls an opportunity. Well, actually, you know, I kind of pushed them into it. But I gave each girl a chapter in the book to lead the studies, and they did such a great job. They went home and they read over the chapter and really allowed the Lord to speak through them and um, came and shared with them, and it was so rewarding, you know. I think it's our job, you know, the Great Commission, Matthew 28, is to go into the world and make disciples, and we are to disciple those girls so that they can go and disciple others. And so I just wanted to challenge you not to take, you know, your coaching role for granted because the Lord does have each and every one of you in that position for a reason, for a purpose, and uh, those women and men, some of you guys coach men's sport, um, you know, are looking up to you as role models, and... So I just, I want to ask you today, you know, what are you doing with this opportunity that the Lord has given you? And how are you, um, you know, being a disciple to them? How are you investing in your players? And just as a challenge, um, I just, you know, I, it, especially with women, um, you know, they always want to find someone that they can relate to. And I know sometimes we have males coaching women's sports. And so, you know, if you can't relate to them as well, maybe just try to understand them and hear them out. Um, secondly, building trust with your players. And some of, sometimes that just comes with being honest with them and open with them about, you know, what you do. Like he said, I work in the jail ministry. So when I go in and I speak to the women, I have to find a way to relate myself to those women, which sounds a little more difficult than it actually is. Because, you know, as humans, we all experience those moments of anger or bitterness or times of depression or just to rough times and that's what people want to see people want to you know the girls want to know that you've been there and that you understand what they're going through because not everybody has perfect days not everybody has perfect weeks and lastly i just want to um suggest possibly trying to give your players opportunities to not only grow in their faith but also to um you know express their faith i like to give all my players at the beginning of the year an opportunity to just share their testimony in front of the team or at some point and anytime they feel like the lord's speaking to them you know because a lot of times um, those girls that had to lead the Bible studies, hardly any of them had ever done it before, but it was so rewarding afterwards. You know, they, 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 they took a step, um, you know, towards the Lord doing that, a step of faith out of their comfort zone. And how many times 
Do we know the Lord always asks us to do stuff out of our comfort zone? So I, I, I really enjoyed kind of pushing them into that role. And um, so that's basically just what I wanted to share. I, I felt like the Lord wanted to share that with you. And uh, I'm speaking to myself as well. I know the beginning of the season is always exciting and you get all these things that you want to do. And so that's just my encouragement to you today. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit. First of all, I wanted to share kind of what like a college practice is or what we do at Truett. Um, this is actually my practice plan and what I like to do, which I uh, don't know if you guys want to do that, but um, I like to plan out every minute of my practice because I want to make sure that we are constantly moving, constantly flowing. Um, one thing I recommend is to keep everybody active and involved, and sometimes that's hard in volleyball because you've got different people doing different things in different positions, and so um, this year we're actually, one of our days is going to be like an individual practice. I know it's a little different from you guys because you guys have everybody every day for the most part. Um, but what I suggest is doing all your team stuff when all the teams are together, making sure everybody's always touching the ball, always doing stuff, because when you are working, let's say you're working on, you know, setters setting a 31, you've got five kids, your setters and middles working on that, and then 10 girls are standing around shagging balls, well, then their focus is not even on volleyball. They're thinking about boys and everything else you can possibly think of being a teenage girl. And so maybe using, doing that stuff at the beginning before you start your practices or towards the end, doing the individual things, and then making sure that you're keeping everybody involved. Also, at the beginning of every practice, I like to make sure that everybody understands the purpose. And that's for myself. Like, what is the purpose of this practice? And I write it on my practice plan. And, you know, what are the goals? What are we trying to accomplish in this practice? Because girls, they ask a lot of questions. They want to know, why are we doing this drill? What is the purpose of this? And a lot of times, if we can explain that, that's going to help them really understand why we're doing what we're doing. And then um, for every drill, I like to have a goal. So sometimes they know the goal, say we're, we need to get 25 passes to target. Other times they don't know the goal. Other times I have a goal set in my mind and I'm just like, okay, you guys are going to do this drill until we reach the goal that I have. And that forces them to work hard throughout the drill because they don't really know what they're striving for, but they know they're not getting out of the drill until they meet my expectations. So maybe it's we need to make sure we're passing with our shoulders down the whole entire time. And so um, that's just something I like to do. And then discussing, I think it's good to have a follow-up after each practice. You know, sometimes you'll have them corner up or line up to say, what did we do good today? Just getting feedback from the girls. What did you like about practice? That keeps the girls involved and they don't feel like they're just showing up being you know, uh, spoken to and then leaving it. Kind of creates a more team environment. And everybody kind of has feedback and input. Um, next, I know you guys want to hear about the recruiting process, I'm assuming. Um, surely some of you guys are familiar with the fact that there's the NCAA, which is uh, Division One, Division Two, and Division Three. Um, Division One players are usually verbally committed by their sophomore year. Um, of high school. Um, that's when most of the scholarships are going. Not to say that you can't play at the Division One level after you pass then, but a lot of times that's when the scholarships are given. A lot of times they'll take walk-in, uh, walk-ons after that. Um, the Division Two level, there's a lot of um, Christian schools that have now gone from the NAIA to Division Two. For example, Shorter University, uh, Lee University, Emmanuel College. So they do have some very good Christian schools that were small and are getting bigger joining the NCAA. Um, both of those obviously um, offer scholarships. Um, Division three is based more um, academic based. So you've got um, you know Agnes Scott, Oglethorpe, Piedmont College. The, a lot of girls will say, I don't know if I want to play in college because I really want to focus on academics. This might, that might be an option for them. Um, they don't give athletic scholarships, but they will get a lot of academic. Like I said, if you've got a high academic kid, that um, really wants to focus on their um, academics, Division Three might be a, a good option for them. Then there's the NAIA, which is um, what Truett is, and that is kind of its own separate entity, and it can range from anywhere from like a lower end Division One type skill level to lower than Division Three, um, and that's kind of like NCCAA as well. And with the NAIA, um, we do offer athletic scholarships, but every school is different. In the NCAA, everybody only has a certain or has an, a certain amount that they can give, but the NAIA really kind of depends on uh, what the school is able to afford. Some schools are able to stack scholarships, and some are not. So true, we do stack. So they can get athletic, academic, Georgia Hope, the Equalization Grant. So we kind of put together a package for them. Other schools, I think Point, I know Brian used to be like this, they can only either offer academics or athletics one way or the other. So um, 
the types of players that we're looking for, especially since you guys come from um, Christian schools, is probably the leader or some of the best players on your team. Um, someone that has good um, mechanics because it's extremely, um, it's, it's, I guess to say a turn off basically, if a girl's got like very goofy footwork or does something that um, a coach might consider would be a project kid. Um, because it, unfortunately, like we, as soon as August comes, we're right into a Miller season. We don't necessarily have the time to, you know, be reteaching things by the time they get to the college level. And I think it's very important that if you do have players that want to play in college, they do need to uh, play club volleyball. And the reason for that is, first of all, they're playing year round. They're getting a lot of repetitions that the other girls aren't. They're playing with the tops of the tops. You know, only you know every girl from high school plays club. Um, it's a good recruiting tool. You know, during our season, we have the same season you guys do, so we can't really just be leaving and going to see recruits, although sometimes they do. Our big recruiting season is in the spring, so that's when we go to the club tournaments, and if your player is not playing a club um, in a club, then it's almost impossible for us to really see that player enough to be able to make her an offer. Um, so uh, ways that you can get those particular players, and I love what they're doing here, that's really convenient. As much information we can get is great. Um, if you, um, the best way I would say to do is if you have a player that's interested in playing out of college, have that player email the coach or the assistant coach or both directly and um, just tell them a little bit about yourself and what club they play for and showing um, a highlight clip. Um, when I began my search for a college, I went on to collegeboard.com. I recommend that to anybody that's trying to find a college or a good fit because um, you can kind of select what you want in a college and you know the, the geographical locations and um, that you know I got my top 25 back then we did the whole sending it in the mail which is kind of obsolete now um, I know some people still do that a lot quicker to just get an email click on a link the skills video most people really go into detail about the skills video but I can tell you the college coach is probably not going to watch more than two minutes of that so you really want to just like the first usually and that's kind of an exaggeration usually it's about 30 seconds because we're just looking for the skill um, the technique, the footwork, and we can usually tell in about 30 seconds whether that girl is, you know, whether we want to spend the two minutes watching the rest of the video, and furthermore, whether we want to go and um, watch that girl play um, in live. So, um, if you are, if your um, students are interested in a certain college, they almost always have online recruiting questionnaires that you can go onto the athletic website and fill out. I know personally for Truett, we, um, I cannot keep recruiting somebody until they've filled that out. And that's because we're very specific about um, what we're looking for. And so by filling out that questionnaire, it tells me um, we have a section because we are a Baptist school um, to say whether they attend church regularly, whether they've been baptized, what their testimony is. And every college is looking for something different. You know, like I said, Division three schools are looking for high academics. For us, we're looking for a good fit. So kids from your school would most likely be a good fit for a Christian school like us. We like people that, like I said, attend church regularly and have been baptized. And like I said, not everybody has those, um, you know, specs, I guess you could call it. But um, that's just something. So, you know, by you know, filling out the questionnaire, I'm able to get a lot of information from that girl right away. And also, um, Every, almost every college has summer camps, and that's a great way to get out, get your kids out in front of their coaches that are almost always there um, early enough, you know, of course, um, right in front of them to see what they're able to do. It's also good for the kids to kind of get an idea of what the environment is like and um, what the coaching staff is like. Um, so I guess at this time I'll take any questions that you might have about anything I've talked about the recruiting process. Not everybody wants. <laughs>
um, that has like 400, 400 kills in a season. That might be different than a 6A school kid that has 400. So we do understand that the, um, the stats vary. So I personally um, don't look too much into stats as much as I look to where they ranked, um, either on their school or in the conference or in that area in the region. Uh, a lot of times, just if a player is a, you know, a um, 5A player of the year, uh, first first team all area, that's you know something that we look at more of like, and also just leadership wise, was she your team MVP? Was she uh, coaches year uh, coach of the uh, player of the year, um, coaches award, or different things like that, rather than she had 237 kills in a season? If that answers your question. Do so you think the most important thing, though, besides playing at the school is to play on some type of club if you want to move to the next level? Yes, I can say that even at Tripp, which is, you know, um, in the NAIA, it's almost I rarely bring anybody in that hasn't played club. It's almost an automatic. I hate to say that. but um, And I know it's hard at your schools because some of you guys have multi-sport athletes. And, um, you know, that is something um, to consider. But like I said, it's – if they're not a project kid and they've already kind of got it together, it's, I don't necessarily mind. I do have kids that have played volleyball and basketball but have done lessons on the side or have had some previous club experience. Um, like I said, it's definitely situation by situation, but sometimes they won't even take a second look if they haven't played any club volleyball. Yes? Um, I coach, but I try to also uh, coach the girls. My question is, as far as being a college coach, positional kid, um, I think everybody's looking for an all-around kid, um, but like I said, a lot of times it's situation by situation. If they're an outside, they almost all have, they need to be able to play defense. Middles, if they're not too strong in the back row, that's a different story. So um, right side, same. They don't necessarily have to be as defensive, but definitely on the outside, a lot of coaches would just prefer to have six kids out there the whole time. So. Again, my name was Melody from Trey McConnell. If you guys have any other questions, I'll be more than happy.